featherweight championship of the world. Weighing 160 even, middleweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Robinson. Robinson. Introducing from West John, Utah, wearing white trunks, weighing 157 and a quarter, the challenger, G. Fulmer. Fulmer. Gene got started in boxing with uh, my grandpa uh, taking him by the Marv Jensen's gym. Marv Jensen had a gym on Redwood Road and about uh, 80th South and he worked with a lot of little kids and they'd see, uh, he'd see the kids out there and uh, my grandpa asked him if he wanted to box and uh, he said yes and that, that started it. He was about eight or nine years old and so Uncle Gene started boxing and then he had uh, the younger brothers, Jay and Don, and as he was boxing, uh, they, they came up in the ranks and they started boxing too, so it became kind of a tradition with the whole, the whole family. Marv was his, his manager and, and coach for most of the time after he won the uh, middleweight championship of the world in 19, uh, January of 1957. <laughs> he, was, he was definitely a, a brawler. Um, I've always referred to him as the strongest man to ever put on gloves simply because he didn't have a lot of style um, and he could just keep walking you down and walking you down until they, they gave up. His conditioning must have been next to excellent. I, I don't know, it might be some God-given gifts there when it comes to conditioning. You know, if you're going to fight in a champ world title fight, that was 15 three-minute rounds. Uh, for a title fight, and you try going 15 three-minute rounds with somebody giving it a, a 100%, you see how much endurance that you really need. <laughs> uh, I had a good, good pro career. Beat Sugar Ray Robinson, who is still considered the best boxer in the world ever. Uh, beat him for the title. So when he, he had four bouts with Sugar Ray Robinson. Yeah. He won two of them. There was one draw, and he lost one. I mean, that's what you spend your whole life and your career getting to do is to get to that top, the shot of that top spot. And that wasn't easy to get at that time. Uh, Madison Square Garden was the mecca for boxing then. That's where all the championship bouts were held. And uh, I don't know, Marv Jensen had to have had some kind of pull there to be able for them to look at some guy in West Jordan, Utah come over here because it was one of those eastern things that they didn't think guys from the west could fight mm -hmm. and so you know there's a little bit of that kind of uh, uh, stigmatism uh, and the people there in the east they still are that way when you go back to hall of fame uh, it was a long time before they would even get anybody from the west in, into the hall of fame because they they thought all the better boxers were from the East there. So I'm, I'm sure it was very nervous uh, for him and uh, nerve, nerve wracking, but uh, he just gave it a, all he could. Gene, uh, really it was a physical fight and that's not something that Chibi Ray liked. You know, he was a fancy guy and dancing and Uncle Gene had just really mauled him. So that was a big deal when Gene won the world championship uh, number one, he was from Utah, where that was the first world-class, world-renowned athlete to win a win a, win a championship, uh, uh, you know, in, in sports. Number two, he was a Mormon, and so that was a that was a real big deal. We'll make it official when we go to our ring announcer and get the official scoring. Here we are. Referee Ruby Goldstein scores an eight. Five, two even, favor of Burma. <laughs> Judge Frank Bobs, 10 to 5, favor of Burma. <laughs> Harold Barnes, 9 to 6, favor of Burma. Winner by unanimous decision, and the new middleweight champion of the world.